Okay, up next is Lori Dines from Etsy, and he's going to be talking about building uh, network monitoring graphs super fast and super easy. Please help me welcome Lori. Thank you. <clears throat> so yes, this is, uh, this is me, I work for Etsy. Um, it's quite a specific tool today, um, talking about network graphing. Um, I'm not going to talk about how monitoring is important because I think everyone else has already done a pretty good job of that. Um, I originally posted this quote in 2009, if it moves, graph it. Um, I've now altered that quote now to, even if it doesn't move, you should be graphing it anyway. Um, so, uh, and as a side note, if you do want to discuss your monitoring or how, how much you love it or hate it, there is an excellent IRC channel on Freenode, which is Monitoring Sucks. So uh, feel free to join that. Um, so what is your network doing? I mean, we, uh, you, you never know what could happen, even if you've been doing it for years. Um, we, had a, uh, we had an interesting case uh, earlier this year where we switched from SVN to Git. And uh, Git was so much faster, and at the time we only had one gigabit links back to, our, um, back to all our switches. And so what actually happened is, um, because we deploy so often, there's so many people writing unit tests, uh, our Jenkins continuous integration server actually uh, was maxing out one of the links to the network. And you can see on, this, uh, on the bottom graph here, this is actually affecting the actual live site because of traffic with people testing things, pulling things from, from Git so fast. Um, so we have, we have a goal to basically, we want every port and every switch to be monitored. And previously, this is very difficult for us to maintain using a lot of um, previously used open source tools that, uh, whilst excellent, um, don't really fit this goal very well. It takes a lot to maintain them. Um, also, the, the only reason why we, we didn't catch that existing problem on our existing tools because, um, as it turns out, five-minute polling intervals, we talked just about averaging. Uh, we were actually missing the spikes because they were being averaged down to what looked like 200 megabit spikes, when actually they were they were actually gigabit maxing out the network. So we also wanted um, like very precise polling details, um, and we wanted it to be really easy to add um, new switches because you know adding machines all the time, um, no cloud for us. You know everything's very much real machines, so there's there's a lot of things to monitor. Um, how hard can it be? There are so many tools, and we spent a few months, in fact, actually, going back and forwards, evaluating different ones. And all the time I was thinking to myself, this sounds like a, a fairly easy problem to solve. We just want everything. Um, although I realize, again, that everyone has their own set of requirements. So this is, again, quite specific to us. But I hope that someone else will find it useful as well, if, because I think, really, you should be looking at all of, you, all of your network as a whole anyway. Um, so this is where I introduced Fitbit. No one ever pronounces anything right. I pronounce everything wrong, so you can call it whatever the hell you like. <laughs> uh, it stands for fill in the blank. Um, it's based on RD tool, just like tools like Cacti and Ganglia, um, using the same data structure. Uh, so it's actually backwards compatible with a lot of different tools, and it's written in PHP. Um, so the, the overview, the features that we have, automatic discovery, every port that is up on every switch has will be graphed. Um, if the port goes down, that's handled. If you rename it, doesn't matter. Um, it's one line for every switch, like no faffing around with, with stuff like that, and we pull every minute to get the most detail out of everything. Um, and not only that, but on, on, the, on the interface side, it's very important to have just a very simple interface, but be able to search for whatever you need quickly um, and to filter out the stuff that you don't want. Um, and for the full detail, we, we monitor the whole combination of um, megabits a second uh, and different types of packets a second, like unicast and multicast and such, as well as, uh, as, well as errors and discards and such. Um, all you need is some sort of web server, PHP, PHP client line, RRD tool, MySQL, cron, and of course some switches to monitor. The installation consists of getting the code, database schema, it's, it takes about 10 minutes. And you can go back to uh, browsing Reddit afterwards um, once you've got all your graphs. So it looks like this. Um, you have a list of devices. You, have, you can set your time period, and that changes the view of the, every graph. You can set a refresh interval um, in case you want the page to refresh, the graphs to refresh automatically. You've got a search box. Um, you can choose between the type of different graphs. And you can shoot browsing the hosts. Um, and I'm going to do a demo in a second, hopefully, if the VPN holds up. So adding a switch, this very ugly line of code is basically each line is a switch. 
Um, so it doesn't look the prettiest thing in the world, but it's obviously very quick because you're just duplicating lines. Um, you have a, a pretty display name. You enable or disable that switch. You show or hide it on the interface. You put an IP address or a host name in. Um, you put the SNMP, SNMP community in, and you list the types of graphs that you want, and that's it. As soon as you put that line, that line in the config file, it just starts working automatically. That's it. Um, so now, hopefully, I'm going to do this. If I can find the screen. Ah, there it is. All right. So this is what it looks like. A bit squished on the screen. Um, so you ha again, there's a, you can see all the interface here. Very basic, very quick. So if I go to uh, an example here, you can see the graphs. You can't see very many of them, unfortunately, because it's quite small. Um, and so at the minute, I've got all the graphs. Um, I can search in here very easily, Web86. Now you can see just the graphs of Web86. Uh, and now I can choose bits. And I've just got the, just the graphs that have bits a second. Um, and you can see I can change the filters here to change quickly between what I want. Um, and if time period down to five minutes, you can see each step every minute is monitored. So any spike um, is easily visible. Um, so it's very uh, quick to figure that out um, on the interface. All right, back to the slides. Oh, and also, I think I missed. I can't find the thing again now. Um, you also, the searching is both by alias. So as you saw there, I can search for anything that has stuff on memcache in it. Um, and there's all the memcache graphs. But I can also do something like 10 gigabit Ethernet. And you can see all the ports that have 10 gigabit Ethernet. As quickly as that. OK. Let's go back here. So what happens when a new port comes up? Again, it's automatic. The next polling run, so in the next minute, the graph just appears, nothing to change, no configs. What happens when a port goes down? Uh, all the graphs in that view are listed by the time, so the older graphs get pushed to the bottom if they're not being updated anymore. Um, and they also have a little tag that shows them as stale, as you can see in that example. Things get unplugged, machines get plugged all the time. Um, the stale time is configurable, and you can also have a config option to clean up all the existing ports so you can free up your disk space so that you uh, reclaim that back. Um, and it's also marked here. You can, you can also see very quickly whether the data you're looking at is, is still new. Um, we also have uh, support in our open source dashboard. So, um, you know, always, always put everything on big screens, always have it around the office so everyone can see it. Um, there's support built right in, um, which looks like this, such as example one I uh, made very quickly. So you can have cacti ganglia graphs alongside very easily. Um, and it also supports network weather map. There's a small patch for that. But should do crazy things like this, which is a, uh, a diagram view of um, all of our network switches. Um, and it's actually interactive. You can actually hover over those links, and it will show you the graphs. Um, so you can quickly see which are the, were the most used. So this was version one. It works for us. It was written very quickly. I'm sure there's bugs. There's lots of features I want to write. But it's open source. So please, if you want to use it or you want to contribute, there's the URL. Thank you very much.